Hello and welcome to this seminar, Preparing for Your First Nursing Role. My name is Julie Watkins and I'm a careers coach with the Royal College of Nursing. My colleague Ruth Jones, who's the careers information coordinator, will also be providing you with some tips as we go along today. OK, so before we start, I just want to give you an idea of how the careers team at the RCN can help you. So if you're looking to apply for jobs and you want some feedback on a CV or supporting statement, you can email this to us. If it's a supporting statement, you can email the person specification and job description and we can have a look at it a little bit more specifically then for you. If you feel you're at a career crossroads, maybe you're not sure which path to take, what field of nursing to go into, Again, we can help you with this. We've lots of information in the first instance online. And then if you need to book an appointment for one to one telephone career coaching, you can do that too. We also offer interview coaching and lots of sample interview questions and tips online, along with career coaching. My colleague Ruth will give you an overview of career coaching as we go through this seminar. OK, so let's get started. What are we going to cover today? We look at being job ready, so preparing for your first role. We'll offer you some top tips on supporting statements, CV writing and interviews. And then we'll finish with an overview of the careers website and a little bit more about RCN career coaching. You may wonder where to begin. We've lots of information online and what we speak about today you'll be able to find at www.rcn.org.uk forward slash careers. It's always going to be a good place to start to explore the different roles and pathways in nursing. We've got a good career crossroads page it's not only your clinical areas, but you've also got your leadership, your education and research. And this page will provide you with an overview of those different pillars of nursing. Then we've got the Nursing Career Pathway resource. This has been developed to showcase the many different roles within health and social care. It includes information on how to make a career move, and any education or training requirements that you may need and where the role could lead to for career progression. You're going to also want to prepare your CV. We have lots of tips online to help with the structure, including action words um, that help to be able to bring your CV to life. And if you need inspiration, you can check out our sample CVs. Take time to research the roles that you're applying for. Read the job advert, the person specification and job description carefully. Research the employer. What are their values? What strategies do they have? Do they have a five year vision? You may also want to arrange an informal visit. We'll look at this a little bit more closely to in, within the seminar, but there'll always be a, a name attached to a job advert. Um, so here's an example of a quick email that you can draft to arrange that informal meeting. So how do you research your clinical area? The RCN have clinical topic pages, which include lots of resources, articles, blogs and case studies. There's also lots of different forums and networks you can join and connect and share and chat to your peers. You might also want to look at any charities and external networks. Um, they often have good resources and information around the latest news. They might even tell you any useful networks or third party organisations. Some may even offer free e-learning and virtual courses for healthcare professionals. You 
maybe follow relevant people and organizations and social media. You'll find perhaps some of the RCM professional leads will be on Twitter. Um, you've got the Department of Health and Social Care. You've also got LinkedIn. LinkedIn is more of a professional provider then so that you can just again develop and increase your networks. Is it the right role for you? In an ideal world, we'd all choose a job that's right for us, our skill sets, our personality and our values. Does it align with what your strengths are and your interests? Would you get support or perceptorship? Certainly in terms of having a look at your strengths and your interests and your work values, this is something we can offer through a one-to-one -one telephone career coaching session. It's also important that you make sure you get the right level and depth of support. This is going to be your first step into nursing. So make sure you check out what perceptorship is, are you going to get and what does that look like practically? So hopefully by now you've got a bit of an idea of how you can prepare for that first nursing role. Um, we'll start next by looking at some of our top tips um, around your supporting statement, CV writing and interviews. So let's start with our top tips for supporting statements. Tip number one, study the job pack. The job pack will generally include the job advert, the job description or the JD, the person specification, the PS, and organizational values. The job pack will help shape your supporting statement in an application. In particular, the person specification is really going to help you to meet the criteria. So the purpose of a supported statement is to get shortlisted. You want to demonstrate to an employer that you're the right person, you're applying for the right reasons, and then you meet, that you meet all of their criteria. So why is the person specification so important? The person specification is a checklist for your statement. Let's have a look at some examples. Here you'll see two examples of a person specification. They can sometimes vary in terms of how they look, but they generally all have an essential or desirable criteria at the top. You'll also notice as highlighted in red, some will show an A or an I, that means that they'll be assessing that on application or at interview. So whatever kind of points that they've got in the essential criteria for the post and an A next to it, you need to make sure you're given examples in your supporting statement. Tip two, structure your statement. Generally, your supporting statement will have an introduction, a main body and a conclusion. We'll go through these in each different stage, um, but I think the introduction is something that can get forgotten sometimes. So let's have a look. Tip three, add an introduction. Ideally, you should aim to have a short, punchy and attention grabbing introduction. Use your judgment as to what to include or write about. Some ideas that you can use are why you're applying for the role, your career so far and your career journey, why you became a nurse, what you love about your work or your placements, why do you want to work for them? What would you bring to the role? What are your strengths? And what is your vision? These are just some ideas to help you with structuring that introduction. Let's look at an example. Just take a few moments to read this example in front of you. How does that sound? Do you think it's a good example? 
or do you think it could be expanded on a little bit more? It's a little bit generic. There isn't anything about this individual that really kind of stands out. So we think this is a poor example um, of how to introduce your supporting statement. Let's take a look at a better one. Take another moment just to read this example. What are your thoughts? Hopefully it reads much better to you. You can see the key areas that they've really showcased here. They've demonstrated how keen they are to work with this patient group, that they have an interest, they completed a, a placement on this ward, they've had an informal visit, and they also mentioned the trust values. So this is a much better example of how to introduce your supporting statement. So we've got that introduction. Now let's look at our next tip. Tip four, use examples and evidence. This will be the main body of your supporting statement, which is probably the most important, where the person specification is really going to come into play with this section. So in the main body, you need to cover all of the essential criteria in the person specification. You need to use your examples and evidence, back up that you have the relevant skills, qualities. You want to follow the order of the person specification as much as possible. So that means to try and echo some of the headings that they have. So qualifications, skills, knowledge, experience. And you also want to echo the duties in the job description where possible. Let's take a look at an example here. I have excellent leadership skills. That wouldn't get this individual shortlisted. There's no evidence to back that up. It's very vague. It's non-specific. It doesn't offer any insight into what that candidate can bring. There's no evidence, no examples. So what, what can this person do? They need to explain how and why they meet the the person specification and the criteria listed. Here are some better examples. I'll give you a moment just to read through those. So you can see in the person specification here, the criteria might have been the ability to work flexibly, demonstrate leadership skills. You don't have to be in a managerial role to have leadership skills. You'll be able to find them in managing projects um, or taking charge and tasks where, where possible. So tip five, conclusion and checklist. You want to conclude your supporting statement. We go back to that structure. You've got your introduction, the main body, and now let's, let's finish it off nicely. What do you want to include in your conclusion? You want to reiterate any important points. How you meet their values. If you haven't included that in the introduction, you may want to pop it in the conclusion or anything else that's important. If maybe you're doing some volunteering work uh, and that isn't identified anywhere in the person specification, but, but actually when you volunteer, it really does demonstrate a lot of skills and different kind of qualities that you have. So you may want to pop that in the conclusion as well. And finally, here is a checklist you can use to aid you with future applications and writing your supporting statement.
you want to make sure you've addressed all the criteria from the person's specification. You always give specific examples or evidence. Make sure your examples are as relevant to the role as possible. Show the employer how you meet their values where possible. Convince the employer that you'd be the best person for the job. And make sure your statement is clear, concise and accurate. So I'm going to pass you over now to Ruth, who's going to go through some CV tips for you. There are lots of different opinions out there as to what makes a successful CV, and it's likely you'll hear different advice from different people. But here are our top tips. Tip one. Keep a master CV. A master CV is a working document that states absolutely everything that you've ever done in your career. You can use your master copy as a base or a starting point every time you need to write a CV to apply for a new position. List all your skills and achievements, previous jobs and duties, qualifications, and any courses, CPD or professional activities, and keep it safe. Tip two. CV format. There are different ways that you can format your CV. So when you apply for a job, have a think about what format would be best. A chronological CV organises your work experience by your jobs, starting with the most recent and working backwards. Whereas a skills orientated CV organises your work experience by skills or areas of expertise. Tip three, less is more. Having too much detail in your CV could be overwhelming or ineffective, and you risk your best achievements or skills getting a bit lost. Think of your CV as a snapshot of your career. Aim for two sides of A4 max, that's a golden rule, and focus on the most recent and the most relevant. Tip four, tailor your CV. Make sure it's relevant to your target audience. Examine the job advert, the person's specification and the job description for the role you're applying for and put yourself in the employer's shoes. What skills, qualifications, experience or qualities do you think would be useful or relevant for this particular role? Tip five, profile and key skills. Introduce your CV with a profile. Give a brief but relevant overview of yourself aiming for around three or four sentences and no more than a hundred words. Ask yourself, what would this particular employer find useful to know about you and why you're applying for the job? Then below, have a key skills or a key skills and achievements section, listing four to six bullet points to highlight your most relevant skills, experience, qualifications or achievements. Think of it as your highlights reel or your clickbait. The idea of this section is that you'll create an immediate impression of being a suitable or well-matched candidate for the job right at the beginning of your CV. Always tailor these two sections depending on what job you're going for and tweak them with your target audience in mind. There's so much more advice online with detailed guidance, examples, action words, CV templates and samples step-by-step -step guides, and you can even email your CV to us for feedback. Visit rcn.org.uk forward slash careers. So we've gone through some preparation, supporting statements, CVs. Let's have, now have a look at some interview tips. Just take a few moments to think about what can you do before your interview? What preparation are you going to do? OK, so here are our top five tips. Tip one, inform a visits. This is your chance to create a good impression. 
With the current situation and COVID-19, you may need to carry this out over the telephone, but it is still something that we'd strongly recommend you do. You can gain a real insight into the role, the culture and the environment. It's an opportunity to gather more research. What can they tell you about the kind of person that they're looking for? Are they running any initiatives that you need to be aware of? You may gain some valuable application tips. And it's a great chance to break the ice. You may have an informal visit or conversation with somebody that's sitting on the panel. So you've already built a bit of rapport with them. Tip two, study the job pack. Here you're going to find the person specification and the job description. This is where you're going to get your interview clues from. The person specification is probably one of the most important documents you can use to prepare. It'll identify what they may be assessing at interview by indicating an I next to it. It's good to revise your statement. What did you write in your supporting statement? What examples did you use? And also in that pack, you should really have the employer values. Tip three, research the employer. What are their values or mission? Do they have any frequent news? Are they running any initiatives? What services do they offer? What's their goals and vision? This will always help you to shine at interview. You can mention a lot of these in the opening questions. So why do you want to work here? or perhaps in some of your closing questions that you may ask at the end. I've noticed you've run, you're running this initiative. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Tip four, mock questions. You're gonna get your clues in the person specification and from your informal visit or your informal chat. The employer values are gonna help you in terms of the behavior or what kind of person they're looking for. Careers online, we have sample interview questions online, you can find on the website shown. And also in terms of your preparation, think about what questions you're going to ask them. And finally, our tip five, practice makes perfect. Absolutely. It's so important that you rehearse what you're going to say and you rehearse your answers. We're going to look at that next. One of the most common style of questions you'll be asked to interview is known as a competency-based question. This style of interview question is designed to uncover real life examples to demonstrate your skills and abilities. For these types of questions, use the STAR technique to help you structure your answer. STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. Let's take an example. Imagine you're asked, how have you dealt with conflict? One of my patients discharge had been delayed. Their father was very angry and shouting at me that he was going to discharge the patient himself. I needed to try and calm him down to defuse the conflict, explain why the patient needed to stay on the ward and minimise disruption. I empathise and acknowledge the distress that the delay was causing speaking slowly and calmly to try and influence the mood of the conversation. I let him vent, using verbal nods to show I was listening and make him feel heard. I explained the reasons for the delay and how important it was to wait for the doctor and that we wanted the best for the patient. The father had calmed down completely and agreed to wait. By listening and empathising and explaining, I had managed to defuse the situation. And last on the agenda today is an overview of the RCN careers section of the RCN website and a little bit more about the RCN career coaching service. All of our information and resources can be found online and we've got a dedicated area for student and newly registered nurses. This includes CV writing for student nurses and newly qualified nurses with CV samples and examples a sample supporting statement for student nurses and newly qualified nurses 
with a tutorial on how to write a supporting statement. Information on interview skills and interview techniques, such as the STAR technique, and sample interview questions, including sample questions and sample answers. If you want to find out more about career coaching, head over to our career coaching page. It tells you everything you need to know, including what coaching is, what coaching isn't, and the different types of situations and scenarios that coaching could help with. I really hope that's been useful to you just to start to think about your first nursing role and some of your preparation for this. It's such an exciting time for you as a student, um, yet I can imagine it may feel a little overwhelming at times. So just remember how the careers team can support you. We've got tutorials, sample CVs, supporting statements online. If you'd like email feedback on a CV or statement, again, that's something we can help you with. You can check the sample interview questions. You may want to book interview coaching or also speak to a career coach about next steps in your career. And remember, we've also got the new student app, which has lots of hot topics and resources for you. And just a reminder of our website address, that's www.rcn.org.uk forward slash careers. If you want to drop us an email, you can do so on the email address shown. A very big thank you for listening today and we wish you lots of luck and happiness in your new